Got some catfish up close here. This guy's playing dead, I think. I don't know why I can't get the camera to stay on the spot there. Well, there's lots of them here as well. <laughs> They're all over the place. There's a ton of them. But they like that water very much. Another absolutely beautiful morning. So people, let's not get too distracted. I started a bit late because I had the other phone just ready for the for the long-term video for the people making the movie. And so I couldn't resist taking the opportunity to provide some shots of the catfish. It's amazing, all the realities of nature are so intriguing. wonders of nature. Aristotle said that wonder is the beginning of philosophy, the beginning of wisdom, to have wonder, to be surprised, to be astonished. So many objects of wonder. We wonder at so many things in life. There's all the earth cry out to God with joy. This is our psalm today. Psalm 66. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Sing praise to the glory of the name of his name. Proclaim his glorious name. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Yeah, we know a little 
little bit more about genetics. And we didn't know about it in that detail. The father of genetics is a, a monk. I think an Austrian monk. He started taking note of how reproduction in plants and so forth develop develops. It's amazing all the experimenting they did with grafting and crossing. And even here we had this little experiment. So there are two, four, five different aloe vera plants here. But there are two other ones over there behind our house that one of our volunteers planted. And so we have that ability to to also aid and enhance and abet the reproduction in the material world. I mean, what an amazing wonder that we also have the ability to do that. And then we just need to know how to do that with great respect and care and to watch for the consequences if there are mistakes made and so forth. It's a very, very complex field, marvelous field of endeavor. We're touching the beginnings of life. And yet it's all there before we act. And all the potential for that further development is also there. And we just have to do small little things to let that spark, that new spark of life happens. that richness, that potential that exists for such to happen. Amazing. And then one of the, the great wonders for our mind and our heart and our soul is something that we see in the first reading today is that through the, the persecution that breaks out in Jerusalem, huge blessings accrue to the church. It's amazing how the, the golden periods of the church come from times of persecution. Like the sea that falls in the ground and rots and bears much fruit. When I was working in Germany, one of the things I used to love was taking groups of young people to the mountains in the springtime. You know, in the winter time, late, late winter into the spring, all the little streams and big rivers were bursting. The melt, snow, snow melt. Now it's the snow melt from Mount Hermon, although this water is not coming from that, it's coming from, from Mount Arbil, where there's no snow, it's coming from uh, other sources from the rainfall eventually. It's overflowing in the water tables. Just the reality of water is such a source of wonder. And then the water that that drowns can also give life. Just from the behavior of this cat, you can think that 
it looks like a, a very petted cat because it's trying to size up what my reactions will be. Amazing how people abandon animals. I can't show the cat signs of affection because with all the people staying in Magdala there are a lot of other consequences and responsibilities if animals start coming in. So then the disciples are persecuted, there's hatred against them, but it becomes a springboard of development because they move on to other places, like the story of Philip today, and we'll see wonderful things happening through his encounter with other people. And that's a wonder how sometimes adversity is precisely the place where we we grow. I'm not sure if I mentioned to you a quote from Bear Grylls, who was here doing a movie uh, last year, I think, and he um, there was a quote I just saw. I'm not sure who put it up on Facebook when I was uploading about two weeks ago. And it said that we love the mountaintops, the high mountains, but we grow best when we're climbing, not when we're up basking in the beautiful view, which is also a blessing and something good and great and so delightful, and especially after the effort. Interesting how the head is the way they hold their head tight into their body. Maybe it's a good exercise for us also to review some hardships we've been through and the blessings that came through those times in our lives. And we have the teaching of John chapter 6 today. I was just reading a little bit now from Brent Petrie on the Jewish roots of the Eucharist and the biblical understanding of the miracle of the manna, the bread from heaven, which one of the Psalms, I forget which one right now, and you can just Google it, just put down bread from heaven, or the bread of angels. And 
and then from the Book of Wisdom, I think that's chapter 16, where it talks of the manna as the bread of angels. Panis Angelicum, the bread of angels, which is a line Thomas Aquinas used in the great hymn about the Eucharist that he wrote 800 years ago in a time of wonderful refreshed consciousness of that gift this bread from heaven bread from heaven bread come down from heaven the bread of life petrie covers some discussion that happened in in the 19th 20th century about natural explanations of the manna in the desert but there is a secretion from some tree or from some insect that lives with the tree but these things only last for a couple of months and we're talking about 40 years straight through and it's also a food that accompanies the people in times of trial because they're out of Egypt they don't have the status quo as slaves so they don't have a source of bread the government doesn't provide the bread maybe that's also a reflection about the time the times that we're dependent on handouts from government something good you're still there you, you were you were gone from my screen from a mo for a moment and then there was also the quail the, the, the meat the flesh the meat that was given food from heaven this expression, this experience, and Jesus uses this to, to because this is in the, in the mentality of the time. It's a sign that's expected for the Messiah, that the Messiah will provide bread from heaven. And so in John chapter 6, we have a lot of teaching about this, Whereas in the synoptics, we have the accounts of the institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper. In the synoptics, uh, it's taken care of like that. But in John's Gospel, then two, two generations later, that's all deeply assimilated. There's no need to repeat it. And then there's this whole meditation, this whole reflection, this deeper understanding as time has gone on, the Holy Spirit leading them to the fullness of truth. I just saw this log and I thought it was like a catfish first, more or less the shape of it and this widening at the other end. But it's actually a log. <laughs> I thought it was a big dead catfish. I don't think to be too long there, the jackals would take care of it. He who eats this bread will live forever. Will not hunger anymore. The amazing love of God. In the self-giving of God. Expressed with so many physical realities like the sunrise. And so many spiritual gifts like revelation. The incarnation. And then, in today's readings, the Eucharist, the bread from heaven. I think we'll leave it like that for today, people. Uh, we should, except you want to check out the, the video here, how it's coming along.
see you later alligators <laughs>